Hey, so um, for this, we are coming back to ideas of variance and expected value and these ideas that we learned about earlier and going a bit more in depth with them. And so first, um, let's look at something fairly general and maybe a bit abstract. We have the expected value of some distribution, uh, discre some discrete random variable distribution is 1.25. And so remember, even though I don't know what the distribution is, that just means essentially the average value we'd expect over time is 1.25. The variance, which is a measure of how the, the data is dispersed, or in this case, how the different probabilities or different outcomes, how dispersed they are from that expected value is 0.78. And remember, standard deviation is a square root of variance, or variance is the square of standard deviation. Well, here we're looking at, what if we have this? What if we have the expected value of 3x minus 2? That means, what if we triple all the expected values and then subtract 2 from them? Um, or I should say, triple all the values that are possible and then subtract 2. You know, and for example, let's say we're rolling a dice. If you're rolling a dice, a six-sided dice, your expected values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 most likely. And so in this case, the expected value of all of this would be 3.5. That's the average value of these. Well, in this case, then 3x minus 2 would mean what if we, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, what if we triple all these and then subtract 2? So in that case, instead of my outcomes being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there would be 3 minus 2 is 1, 6 minus 2 is 4, 9 minus 2 is 7, and so on. And these would be my new expected values. How would that change? Sorry, those would be my new possible outcomes. How would that change my expected value? And for expected value, it's quite pleasant, actually. This here, the expected value of 3x minus 2, is the same as just 3 times the expected value of x take away 2. And so since we know this is 1.25, this will just be 3 times 1.25 take away 2, which is 1.75. With variance, the variance of 3x minus 2 will also change, but in a different way. Um, just subtracting or adding some value to our outcomes makes no difference to the variance. It does change the values, but they're still grouped together in the same way. And so subtracting or adding any value to your outcomes makes no difference to the variance, but multiplying it does, and multiplying it spreads out the variance. In fact, it spreads it out to a power of 2. And so in this case, the variance of 3x minus 2, and in fact, I want to make that x more clearly a capital letter. This is the same as 3 squared times the variance of just x. The minus 2 makes no difference. So remember, this is 0.78. So I have 9 times 0 0.78, which in this case, 7.02. And so in general, uh, with expected values, if you multiply the outcomes and subtract, those same things, those same parameters affect the expected values at the end. With variance, though, adding or subtracting makes no difference. Whatever you multiply by is squared it's that, in terms of its difference to the variance. So let's get a little less abstract, but also a little bit more work to think about. I have this bag of marbles, 10 marbles. I can see there's white marbles, black marbles, and striped marbles, and you can see the numbers in there. But we're attaching points to each of these. So we're saying if you select a black marble, that's 10 points. If you select a white marble, that's four points. And if you select a striped marble, that's six points. So first, without using our GDC, really to remember how we find expected values, What's the expected value? And so for this, the expected value in general, and again, we've learned this before, is the sum of all our outcomes times the probability of that outcome occurring. So in this case, my outcomes are, there's three of them, one of which is retrieving a black marble, which in terms of points, it, the outcome is the 10 that matters. So there's a 10 as one possible outcome. And the probability of that is 2 out of 10, or 1 fifth. Plus, do the same for all of them. So again, that there, that relates to my black marbles. Next, I'll look at the white marbles. They're, each of those is worth 4 points. 
and there is a 4 in 10 probability of that being selected. So it's 4 times 4 in 10. Plus, and then I got my striped marbles. And each of those is worth 6 points, we're saying. So that's the outcome. And the probability of that is also 4 in 10. Multiply this out, you get exactly 6. So 6 essentially is, if we were to repeat this over and over and over again for, you know, a long time and you know towards infinite an infinite number of times we'd expect on average the number of points in this case to get closer and closer to six and that's it let's find the variance now variance while we can do with a formula you are not expected to know that for this and so we can just use our gdc we can do their gdc as well for expected value but i also want it. we are expected to remember how to calculate expected value at times without a gdc so for variance um, the way we can do it is we want to create a table in our statistics uh, application. But your one column, your first column, or you know, for example, in the TI 84, it's L1. These would be our possible values. So in this case, 10 points, four points, and six points. Your second column, we're gonna treat this as the frequency, which is the probability. The probability essentially does tell you the frequency this can occur. And so this was two tenths or one fifth and uh, four tenths or two fifths for each of these. And so this is the table we're going to put into our GDC and we're going to just need one variable statistics where we have a frequency table. So just make sure when you go to your one variable statistics, which we've done earlier in the course, just make sure you tell it that this is the frequency. There's a one in five frequency of getting 10 points. And when you do that, it'll quickly show you the, probably not the variance on your calculator, but it'll tell you the standard deviation which is approximately 2.19089. Uh, Helps if I can write. That's it. Variance is that squared. So it's approximately 4.80. As well, when you do that, we should confirm that the, you will see your expected value is still 6. You'll see that there as well, just to confirm we did that correctly. All right, so now say we have the exact same setup with a new scoring system. This time, the black marbles are six points instead of 10. The white marbles are three points instead of four. And our striped marbles are four points instead of six. So how can we determine the new standard deviation, sorry, the new expected value and variance without just putting all these new values into our GDC? We could. Um, but if we realize that these new points are not completely random, they are related to the original points, and it may not be immediately noticeable, but in the end, uh, what works for all of them is if we take our original points and divide by two, and then plus one. And so this new point system we realize is just the previous outcomes divided by two plus one, which means our expected value for this will be the same as what we had before, divide by two, or in fact, maybe I'll write this as times a half, right? Multiply by a half, divide by two, plus one. That will be my new expected value, and the variance will be the same as before, but x time, times a half plus one. Let's first focus on expected value. Like we see seen before, I can calculate this by just going one half times the old expected value plus one which is one half times six. That's just from the last question, plus one. So our new expected value is now four, nice and quick. And again, if we want, we could go to our GDC and put in these new outcomes. Instead of 10, four, six, six, three, four, and you should get the same expected value. That's it for variance. Uh, the plus one makes no difference, the one half does. And so the new variance will be the same as the old variance, but that one half is going to be squared. So it's one half squared times the old variance or in this case, one quarter times 1.20, or approximately 1.20, that was rounded, which leads us to approx... Um, oh, sorry, 1.20 is my answer, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, it was approximately 4.80, there we go. And that's approximately 1.20. And again, you could quickly confirm with your GDC, but we do want to understand how these transformations affect the expected value of the variance, which are quite quick. Lastly, back to being a bit abstract. Um, 
Consider a random variable in which we have this scenario, in which the variance is the same as five times the expected value, which is 13.95. So we do know the variance exactly, and we do know the expected value. It's 13.95 divided by five. Given that this equals 9.37 and this equals 125.55, and knowing that A is positive, what's A and B? Okay, a lot of stuff to look at. But let's start with um, looking at expected value. So the expected value of AX plus B, keep in mind, regardless of what this is, is the same as just A times the expected value of X plus B. And keep in mind, we know that um, that equals 9.37. That's what it tells us right there. All right, well, we also know what the expected value of x is. Right here, that is the same as 13.95 divided by 5, which is 2.97, which means I can go a little further and say a times 2.79 plus b equals 9.37. And to write this a little more conventionally, I'll put the coefficient of 2.97 first. So I get 2.9, sorry, 2.79a plus b equals 9.37. No point in me going on from here. I have two variables with one equation. But I have another part I can look at, which is right here. I know the variance of ax plus b is 125.55. So let's take that into account. And so keep in mind the variance of AX plus B equals 125.55. But like we've seen, that plus B makes no difference to the variance compared to before, but the A does. So I can rewrite this as A squared times the variance of X equals 125.55. And keep in mind as well, we know what the variance of X is. It says right here, the variance of X is 13.95. So I have a squared times 13.95, and hopefully at this point we can see we're going to be done quite shortly. I can solve for a here pretty quickly. Uh, we should get a squared equaling exactly 9, so a does equal plus or minus 9. However, it does say up here that a must be positive, so therefore I can just say a equals just 9. So there's half my answer done. And then B, I can just take this value of A and, whoop, wrong spot, put it right there and substitute it in. And you should get exactly B equals 1 once you substitute it in and solve for B. Voila, we are done.